Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm very glad to be here today to share some of my experience in uh, livestock, uh, precision livestock farming or PLF in poultry industry. So uh, just for those who may not be familiar with this term PLF, uh, I just to give a very brief uh, explanation. So PLF or precision livestock farming refers to the use of cutting edge technologies like uh, uh, sensors, automations, and artificial intelligence to monitor both the animal environment and the animal themselves uh, in real time. <clears throat> now the initial work for PLF uh, started uh, a few decades ago, but the term itself uh, was really coined uh, in early 2000s. So since then, it has grown uh, rapidly and has become an important topic because of its potential to revolutionize the uh, traditional methods of uh, livestock and poultry farming. So let's just take a look at uh, uh, some example of commercialized uh, POF systems uh, in poultry production. So in the left, uh, top left corner, we have a photo of two ground robots designed for tasks such as uh, disinfection, bird migration, <coughs> excuse me, within poultry houses. Now, uh, moving to the uh, top right corner, we see a city-mounted robotic system equipped, uh, equipped with several sensors to measure factors like uh, thermal environment, air quality, production parameters, Etc. cetera. Um, and at the bottom left corner, it is a system developed by a European company. Uh, this system uses multiple cameras installed in the poultry houses to monitor the bird activity distribution, you know, which are uh, indicators of poultry behavior, health, and welfare. Well, the picture on the, uh, at the bottom right corner shows an uh, IoT system integrated with various uh, sensors and stores data in a cloud-based platform. So this allows farmers to access farm information anytime and from anywhere, uh, provided they have the internet connections. <clears throat> so manufacturers and uh, researchers have been uh, exploring the potential of using PLF technologies to monitor uh, various aspects so this includes monitoring the environmental aspect, such as temperature, humidity, ventilation, air quality. And PLF is also used to you know, track the production parameters like the water consumption, feed consumption, body weight, feed conversion, et cetera. Now in, the, uh, in the past decade, there, is ha there has been uh, a strong interest in using the technology to monitor the animal-based responses like the vocalization, behavior, or the health and welfare. Now this aspect is very important because, you know, providing what humans think as optimal condition for animals does not guarantee their well-beings unless we understand how these animals respond to these conditions, right? And this is exactly where uh, PLF comes into play. <clears throat> as it uh, has the potential to you know, continuously monitor uh, the animals and collecting animal data uh, that can help us understand the adequacy of uh, uh, the provided conditions. Now, it was always the best to have uh, uh, an integrated system that can monitor all these aspects. So here is an, here, here is an, uh, an example of an uh, integrated system. So this is a scout robotic system uh, that can monitor environment production and animal data at the same time. So UT uh, bought this system from uh, Echo two years ago, and uh, we installed this system in a chicken house uh, in collaboration uh, with, uh, with a local producer. So this is one of the few robotic systems uh, being used in the commercial poultry farm here in the U.S. And it is actually a sitting, uh, a real mounted system that roams and scans the entire chicken house once every two to three hours. And it can continuously monitor a list of uh, 14 parameters um, as shown in the left part of this slide. <clears throat> 
Now this system automatically generates a summary uh, report every day using all its gathered information. So this report include, includes uh, uh, average, maximal, mean value of these parameters, uh, along with the percentage of time these values uh, fall within the optimal range and outside of it. One of the very interesting features of this scout robot is its capacity to detect uh, the, the mortality or dead birds. Uh, so there are several visual and uh, uh, thermal images installed on the scout. We know that the uh, uh, visual images show all the dead and live birds, but the thermal image only shows the live birds. <clears throat> By doing a subtraction of the uh, of the pair uh, pairwise visual and thermal images, the scout robot can report the mortality as well as the location of the mortality. So this really helps farmers reduce the time in searching uh, dead birds in their uh, houses. Now, in addition, uh, the scout robot can also detect suspicious droppings, uh, you know, like those liquidish uh, greenish manure, uh, which is an indication of potential health issue uh, of the birds. Now on the, uh, the figure on the top, uh, the red dots represent the location of the dead birds and uh, the white dot, uh, I mean, the green dots represent uh, suspicious droppings. As you can see that there is an uneven distribution of both uh, mortality and suspicious droppings. So interestingly, that uh, you know most of the most of the mortalities recorded on this on this day occurs in the left half uh, of this chicken house, uh, where all the birds were initially kept during the brooding period. Now, after the brooding period, the birds were allowed to migrate to the other half of the house. It is possible that the stronger birds, uh, you know, choose to migrate to the other side. Uh, which result in a fewer uh, mortality there. <clears throat> now, in contrast, uh, the suspicious droppings were found uh, in right side uh, of the house. We need to look deeper into this matter and figure out what's the uh, underlying cause there. Now, to evaluate the performance of the scout robot, we are uh, conducting validation tests by comparing its results with the traditional GOAT standard method. Now, one such method involves manually identify the dead, uh, manually identify and mapping the bird mortality within the same poultry house. As shown in this figure, you know, each, each of these dots represents one dead bird. Okay? So you can see that the mortalities, once again, primarily occurred on the left side, uh, which align with the results of the scout robot. Now, additionally, we uh, looked at the mortality distributions in uh, different zones within the house, including those near the wall, between the feeder and water lines, and in the open litter spaces. Now, the majority of the mortality uh, uh, were concentrated near the uh, near the wall, with 7.1 dead birds per thousand square feet. And the open space had the lowest mortality rate with uh, 4.3 dead birds per thousand square feet. Now this data can be used to identify you know, problematic zones or regions that require uh, farmers' attention and corrective measures. For instance, avoid the, uh, the dead spot near the wall if that's the real reason for high mortality uh, there. <clears throat> Now we also conducted tests uh, to assess the accuracy of scout environmental sensors. So these two figures shows that the scout robots uh, temperature and RH relative humidity sensors are capable of uh, providing uh, quite accurate measurement uh, when compared to our reference sensors. Now given the scout robot measures the temperature and humidity at a height of five feet uh, above the floor, <clears throat> but the birds are really uh, located on the floor, right? So we are interested uh, in determining whether the scout data can accurately reflect the environment at the bird level. 
Now the result shows in the bottom figures indicate that uh, while the temperature measured by the scout slightly overestimate uh, the temperature at the bird level, uh, there's a kind of consistent underestimation of uh, humidity by 10 to 15 percent. Okay, so this discrimination could be significant uh, under certain circumstances. So, um, so the users need to exercise prudency and consider this uh, uh, deviation when interpreting the scout robust temperature and humidity data. <clears throat> Now, in addition to our uh, poultry robot, uh, we have also been using uh, other systems to monitor the poultry behaviors. For instance, we use the RFID and the accelerometer to, to monitor the bird feeding, uh, drinking, nesting behaviors, um, and look at the influence of lighting, stocking density, and growth rate on these behavior uh, parameters. Uh, we were uh, recently funded by Foundation for uh, Food and Ag Research, or FR. So in that project, we are collaborating with the UC Davis and uh, developing a PLF system using these uh, wearable sensors to look at the impact of perching behaviors uh, on the poultry kill bone damage. <clears throat> Which is, so the kill bone damage is, uh, it is a big welfare concern in laying hens. Now these wearable sensors are uh, currently, I'd, I'd say not very practical, uh, for commercial poultry production, uh, mainly due to the high cost, but uh, they are very useful tools for lab scale research, you know, especially when we need to monitor the individual birds and understand the variations among these individual birds. Now, image video analysis is, uh, is an affordable and a promising technology that can be used for commercial poultry production. Uh, I have been collaborating with my colleagues uh, in developing vision-based system to assessing uh, the walking ability of broader chickens. Now, in the video on the left, you can see uh, a system for monitoring the activity and distribution of the birds in commercial house. Now, by integrating uh, the production data, uh, like in the body weight and age, we can estimate the walking ability or the gait of the of the broader chicken uh, at the flock level in real time. And the video on the right, uh, so this is a pretty you know, simple vision system that tracks the individual birds uh, continuously and provide their uh, movement data, like, <clears throat> like the, mo uh, the walking distance, walking speed, and idleness time, for instance. So now this capacity not only helps uh, us to assess the walking ability of individual birds, but it also provides implications for energy expenditure and you know, production efficiency. <clears throat> now we also implement uh, the video analysis to determine the poultry, uh, specific poultry behaviors, you know, including feeding, drinking, preening, stretching, dust bathing, et cetera. In a recent collaboration among uh, UT, uh, University of Maryland and uh, a primary broader breeder company. Um, we are developing a vision system to automatically track the mating behavior uh, of the broader breeders. Now it's a uh, it's an ongoing project, but you know eventually our goal is to have a system that that is able to detect uh, successful mating behaviors and uh, unsuccessful mating attempts. Uh, in a commercial breeder house, as you can see, you know, in the video on the right here. So this is a successful mating behavior. And later on, this is unsuccessful a mating attempt. Now, in the meantime, uh, at our lab, we are developing a similar, a separate vision system with similar functionality, but we are uh, also trying to enhance its capacity. You know, our aim here is to look into the details of mating behavior, you know, such as the mating duration, uh, the frequency, the, the mounting angle, you know, between the roaster and the, uh, and, and the hen, uh, and more. Okay? So by looking at these parameters, we would like to, you know, determine their potential influence on the fertility of the eggs. So this is the one of major concern for primary poultry breeding companies. 
So we also have uh, conducted several other PLF research uh, that are worth mentioning. So for instance, we have used the audio analysis techniques to identify the bird vocalization patterns uh, and to monitor the operation of farm equipment. Uh, we developed the algorithm to detect instances where uh, the chicken expressed frustration due to restricted uh, access to the feeder. Uh, we also apply the ground robot to train the egg laying behavior of hens uh, and develop a system that can you know, uh, detect the eggs laid on the floor. I just want to uh, bring up some key takeaways from this presentation. So the precision livestock farming enables continuous monitoring of animals and their surroundings. Uh, so this allows farmers to make informed the decisions that are based, uh, you know, that, that are beyond the capacity of the traditional methods. Now, uh, various POF systems have been tested for application in poultry industry. Uh, you know, wearable sensors are very uh, good for lab scale research uh, where we need to understand the individual variations. Now, image and sound analysis have the potential for applications in commercial uh, farms. Now, while the POF research in lab settings have has been extensive, uh, there is a need for more PLF products tailored for field uh, implementations in poultry industry. Now we have observed that some uh, PLF systems uh, cannot be easily integrated with existing systems on the poultry farm. So it could be burdensome for farmers to check information, their data from multiple systems. So therefore it's very important to have a PLF systems that can you know, integrate with existing infrastructures and reduce the effort for data uh, access and management. And additionally, you know, considering the, the low thin profitability uh, of the chicken, of the poultry farming industry, uh, affordability is another key factor to ensure farmers can fully benefit from PLF. Now the development of uh, effective uh, PLF products uh, require collaborations across uh, various disciplines, including animal science, ag, ag engineering, computer science, veterinary, and of course the collaboration with animal producers. Now, in, con in conclusion, the POF offers huge potential to revolutionize livestock and poultry production. So we can unlock the full uh, unlock the full benefits of uh, POF for farmers and industry as a whole, you know, by focus on field implementation, affordability, and usability through interdisciplinary collaborations. So at the end, I'd like to thank all my sponsors, my teams, and my collaborators. Mm -hmm.